Hi everyone, welcome to week two of Food as Medicine. I'm Melissa, your course mentor, and with me I have Simone, who's one of our course educators, who will be joining me today in our feedback video. Helen is away at a conference over in Perth in Australia, so she'll be back next week to um, feed back to you in week three. Yeah, so hi everyone, it's great to be here. Yeah, so Simone, we've had a lot of comments and discussion in the MOOC this week, so do you want to talk to us a little bit more about, about that? Yeah, well, I, I saw that there were 8,000 comments, so yeah. that's fantastic that everybody's engaging with the course. And, Absolutely. Um, yeah, there have been some really great ideas and interesting interesting comments that people have made. Mm. And a lot of comments from people as well saying how much they're enjoying learning from other people's experiences as well as the information in the course, which is great to hear. Yeah. So keep your examples coming. Yep, yeah, great. Yeah, so one of the um, most uh, talked about topics in week two is the idea of food addiction. So this was in the area of food and the brain. So we'd asked learners to talk about whether they thought food addiction was more of a behavioural issue or perhaps more of a um, physiological issue. Uh, issue in the body and it was very interesting that learners seemed to be split about 50-50 about whether they thought it was behavioural or not but one of the most common um, talked about themes within the area of food addiction was a lot of people thought sugar was the cause of food addiction and I guess it's something that we're seeing a lot more about in the media these days how much sugar is added to our products and especially a lot of refined sugar um, in there and one thing that we would like to say to everyone is that just remember that any addiction is a very complex um, a very complex problem and so if you're talking about it to people please remember to you um, or sorry please remember to think about the language that you use yep. it's not black and white so it's not a as simple as just saying oh I think so and so is addicted to sugar or I'm addicted to sugar because there may be some more serious issues underlying that but it is um, important to think if you are addicted to food or do have a food addiction that to perhaps seek some professional help um, to have a talk about about some of those issues with someone who can really help you there yeah great advice yeah and <coughs> so Simone another area that was very um, exciting or sorry very exciting for a lot of learners to learn about is the area of food in the gut yeah, and um, and people were commenting that they didn't realise there were so many different types of carbohydrate. Mm. Uh, yeah, so yeah. It, it is really interesting. There are so many different types of carbohydrate. And even I, as I was reading the comments, I was thinking about an example of, um, of different types of rice. So, mm. for example, basmati rice has a slightly different carbohydrate structure mm. to jasmine rice. So, um, mm. yeah, it's a lot more complex than just carbohydrates are all the same. Exactly, yeah, and all the different types of fibres and things as well. People didn't necessarily know there were so many different varieties or types of fibres out there and they all play a slightly different role, exactly. role in our gut health. Yeah, exactly. And, um, and also, Simone, the different terms pre and probiotics. There was a lot of discussion there as well, wasn't there? Yeah, so mm. those probiotics actually kind of act a little bit like fibre. And, mm. uh, and I saw that a lot of people are taking pre uh, probiotics mm. and uh, not knowing what the, the prebiotics were. But I guess mm. the thing is, if you, you can have all of these beautiful, he um, healthy bacteria in your mm. gut, but if they've got no food, then, um, then you know, they're not going to survive as well. So the prebiotics are the food for the probiotics. Exactly. Mm. Yes, yeah, so if you're very interested in um, taking a lot more fermented foods into your diet, because you've heard that probiotics are really healthy, don't forget to feed those probiotics with some of those high prebiotic foods as well yeah mm. okay so genetics was also a part of week yeah. two and that's mm. your area of speciality yes. uh, Melissa yeah so. absolutely it's an area that I'm very interested in and a lot of people were discussing more about how we're all very individual and how um, food does affect us um, at a very individual level mm. and they were very interested to learn how our genes may be involved in that process there and we did ask learners as well, um, would they be interested in having a test to learn more about their genes and potentially what foods were better for them or not, perhaps? And once again, it was split very um, sort of 50-50. Right. Some people said, yes, they'd be very interested to learn the information held in their genes. While others were a little bit more um, concerned about some of the social and ethical issues. You know, mm -hmm. who would have access to this? Would it be something that everyone had access to or would you have to pay for it? Um, 
what would happen if you found out information in the gene in your genes that you didn't necessarily want to. So it's very interesting to learn everybody's thoughts on that because it's one of these areas that's very new. It sort of exploded onto onto the market um, with the development of a lot of new technology to yeah. be able to um, study our genes. So keep watching this space, reading a lot of the research, and um, I guess seeing how it how it plays out, so we can understand more about yeah how our genes affect our nutrition in the future. Yeah, great. Mm. Yeah, and so um, one of the other things that I'm really interested in is inflammation and yes. diet. And thank yes. you to all of you who filled out um, the survey. That's given us a lot of great information. Mm. Um, and uh, we found that a lot of you are removing whole food groups and you've said that that actually helps with your symptoms of inflammation. Um, and some of you have removed things like um, meat, which is, which is mm. fine because meat has actually been shown to be a little bit pro-inflammatory. But I guess my message is um, make sure that you are replacing uh, the protein that's found in meat with some other foods like legumes, nuts and mm. seeds, for example. And I guess the benefits of those types of foods is they happen to be anti-inflammatory as mm. opposed to being pro-inflammatory. But they'll also give you protein, iron and prebiotics as well with yeah. all the fibre that they contain. Mm. Yeah. Um, so also uh, a lot of you were talking about having healthy fats. Is that being something mm. helpful for their inflammation? So that's really good, um, which is consistent with the research that we've found as well. Mm. Um, and the majority of you, be, of you have been receiving your information from the internet. And, you mm. know, that's a really easy source of information because you just have to click on a button, look at the screen and there your information is. You don't need to make an appointment with anyone, you don't have to pay. So yeah, yeah the internet is a really uh, popular source of finding information. However, some of the information is a little bit dodgy so we have to be careful about how we, um, how we evaluate that evidence. Um, next mm. week we'll be talking about that mm. and, um, and we'll be giving you some tips on what to look for when you're uh, reading some of that information from the internet mm. or from different books and things. Yeah, and I think that's an important point because through throughout the um, the comments, a lot of um, learners have been discussing um, how they can understand whether information is right or wrong, or saying, you know, I'm not sure whether what I've read is correct. So we're hoping that week three you'll you'll find that very helpful. As Simone said, she'll be there to to show you some of the ways that you can have a look um, at information with a different light, I guess, and um, understand whether it's not only right for you but whether the information is actually correct. Yep. And um, for, um, just building upon, um, Simone, what you mentioned about the survey, interestingly, nearly half of people who filled the survey out uh, mentioned that they had um, followed an anti-inflammatory diet for the prevention or the treatment of an inflammatory condition. So quite a few of you out there using diet or um, food as medicine as such to really help with symptoms there. Yeah, mm, great. Which is very interesting. Mm. Well, it's been great seeing everybody and I've really enjoyed this session of the end of week feedback. Um, I'm going to actually be back next week because Melissa is skipping off to the UK. Yes, I'm off to the UK mm. to a conference to talk about the MOOC actually in, um, with a number of peers um, from around the world. So I'm very excited to be heading off to Cambridge in England. Mm. Yes, yeah, so I'll be here and Helen will return as well. So, um, yeah, look forward to seeing you next week. And don't forget to keep discussing those comments. And if you haven't filled out the inflammation survey that we've been talking about, you can still do that. And also there are a number of surveys in week two and week three, so look out for those as well. It would be great um, for all learners to learn from everybody's experiences. Yep, great. See you, everyone. Bye.